weather with Chief Meteorologist Josh Cozart. This is a site that we do not typically get to see in the state of Oregon. There's a tornado touchdown just outside of St. Helens, Oregon. That's to the northwest of Portland. The National Weather Service confirming this tornado. But just look at all of that debris flying into the air, tree limbs. We did see some damage with this system as well. Kind of hard to actually make out that condensation funnel extending from the clouds to the ground. That's what actually gives us that tornado title. But nonetheless, definitely a very ominous sight to the north and west of our location. I want to go ahead and turn our attention to the map and show you exactly where that tornado touched down. Here's the Portland metro area just to the north and west. Here's St. Helens as the system tracked its way through just after lunchtime hour. That's where that quick spin up tornado did happen. Now the reports that we're getting in is some roof damage of a home. Two other buildings were also damaged due to large limbs falling on them and we're still waiting the official rating from the National Weather Service as they have crews out on the scene surveying that damage, but I'm anticipating it to be an EF zero tornado, which typically has wind speeds of 65 to 85 mile per hour winds within that cyclone. A different story though to Oregon's high country, a winter wonderland over the Sandy on pass at 4700 feet. Uh, difficult to actually make out where the road is there with that latest update. Of course, travel going to be very cautious and slow going as we're almost seeing whiteout conditions near the Willamette Pass at 5100 feet. That's why the National Weather Service has issued a winter weather advisory seen in the purple through the Cascades. This lasts all the way into Wednesday morning as our snow accumulations are once again going to be piling up to nearly seven inches in Sandium Pass, just the same in Mount Bachelor. I can hear all of the ski resorts rejoicing right now with the Willamette Pass anticipating just over six inches of additional snowfall and the snow machine continuing to turn at least for the Cascade Passes through Thursday. We're going to see some drier conditions for our Wednesday, but it drops back down to that 3000 foot level just in time for our weekend with a live look over Spencer Butte on this Tuesday evening. The sky's not only darkening from the sun setting so early, but also the clouds that continue to roll into our region with splash and dash shower possible through the Willamette Valley. You'll notice though over the Cascades where that green transitions to the blue. That is where we are seeing that heavy snowfall and even a little clap of lightning in far western sections of Douglas and Lane County from earlier this evening. Additional rainfall amounts going to be adding up to about a tenth to potentially two tenths of an inch. Greatest amounts will be found over the Cascades, but of course that will be falling in the form of snow. As we go ahead and break down our rundown, expecting to see those clouds and raindrops expected through the overnight hours, along with those snow showers in the Cascades. But there's a bit of clearing along the horizon. Wednesday evening may see uh, a sliver of sunshine to poke through some of those thicker clouds. We'll start the day off early in the morning hours on Thursday with clear conditions just for those clouds to roll back in as our next weather maker takes aim at Western Oregon. You'll notice all of these yellows and oranges, an indication of once more heavy downpours anticipated for much of our forecasting area. All thanks to this low pressure system giving us those dark rainy conditions today and the snow and the higher elevations will continue to slide its way further to the east. High pressure replaces that and you know what that means. It's going to really start to dry us out, but it's short lived for our Wednesday and we continue to keep that cold Canadian air diving its way further to the south. We're going to feel those colder temperatures tomorrow, upper 40s, low 50s. Not much of a change from where we were this time yesterday with our Eugene Springfield seven day forecast showing the greatest, heaviest amount of rain anticipated for Thursday, Friday. Highs in the upper 40s to the low 50s. Once we roll into the weekend, those rain chances staying pretty persistent, but temperatures slightly sitting above our average of 39 for those overnight lows. Coos Bay seven day forecast the rain heaviest Thursday into Friday, and we were going to continue to see that Saturday into Sunday with temperatures in the mid 50s. Roseburg seven day forecast slightly drier for our Veterans Day tomorrow. Then the rain returns with a vengeance Thursday, Friday. This is great news, though. We definitely need to see those rain showers persistent, just like we're expecting over the next seven days. And David, the air quality is definitely one of our top concerns, but I want to really kind of show you this image of the GO-17 satellite. It does a great demonstration of showing those easterly winds, pushing all of that smoke from those fires through the Cascades, over the valley locations, and even out along the coast as we continue to be buried under that thick smoke. And just like you said, David, eclipsing the sun with these spectacular sunsets and just sun views throughout the entirety of the day, looking a bit like Mars, and that's keeping our air quality levels at very unhealthy conditions. 
conditions through much of the Willamette Valley, even hazardous at points in time. Umpqua Valley, unsafe for sensitive groups, is something that we need to be mindful of as the National Weather Service keeps our air quality warnings extended through Wednesday afternoon and Thursday evening for the Umpqua, or I should say the Willamette Valley. There's those easterly winds currently. We're seeing double digits in the Eugene Springfield area. Could potentially even see gusts near 50 miles an hour through the Cascades. Not a sight we want to see, especially when it's coupled with the dry relative humidity value. So this measures the amount of moisture within the air. If you couple that with the hot temperatures along with those gusty winds, not a sight we like to see as these fires continue to spark up. And tomorrow, our fire weather outlook, keeping us at extreme levels in the purple in the north and south. Lane County and Douglas County still under the critical fire threat for the rest of this evening into tomorrow. We'll discuss when the smoke and haze should finally move out of our neck of the woods. Coming up in my full forecast. Now weather with Chief Meteorologist Josh Cozart. And smoke continues to eclipse much of western Oregon skies as the smoke, haze, and ash continues to rain down. I'm outside of the KVAL studios right now. Just really wanted to give you a closer look of exactly how thick all of the smoke still is. We've really seen no improvements over the past several days. Hardly even able to make out some of the trees and hills. Our studios are located in the southern sections of the Eugene Springfield area. And this is a site that we are seeing all across Western Oregon. But I want to take a moment, really kind of dive into the Holiday Farm Fire and the size, because this is pretty remarkable. If you take the size of Eugene itself and overlay it over that Holiday Farm Fire, it is now five times the size of our largest city in our forecasting area. Truly remarkable sites there. However, there is some silver lining, some good news. As we take a look at our smoke forecast, the winds now starting to shift a little bit more out of the northwest, as opposed to the easterly winds blowing all of the smoke through the valleys. That will slowly help to push all of that smoke and haze back over into the interior sections of our state. A bit of clearing once we get into Friday night, Saturday out along the coast. But the haze and the smoke definitely going to be sticking with us at least through the weekend and maybe even into the beginning part of next week. As we look at our future winds, anywhere from about zero to five miles an hour, again, out of the northwest. And this has the potential to push that fire that was moving directly to the west down to the south and east over the next several days. It's no secret that it's been downright dry all across western Oregon, and we can see that when we look at our drought monitor with severe and extreme conditions along the west, southwest, and north central regions of the state. And that's been popping up a lot of views just like this. Dust devils spinning up over our parched landscape and the farmers really kind of turning up their soil, definitely helping to give us some truly spectacular shows across the southern Willamette Valley over the past month or so. But what's actually causing the development of a dust devil? Well, it comes down to micro scale meteorology. First, we look at the sunshine that heats our warm surfaces and warm air. It likes to rise and when we get that rising action, it's also pulling in the heat from the surrounding areas and eventually we get the surface low pressure system that starts to develop. It gets a bit of a spin and just like a ballerina that closes her arms in tight, it spins quicker and quicker and that's what's able to pick up a lot of that dust and sand high up into our atmosphere and that's why the dust devils start to form across our parched landscape, but they're short lived as they move over just ever so slightly cooler conditions. That's where we see them quickly start to fall apart, but we'll likely be seeing more dust devils at least over the next week or so as below average precipitation amounts continue to plague much of the Pacific Northwest. Now the National Weather Service is using terms such as catastrophic damage as the storm takes aim again at the borderline of Texas and Louisiana. Here's a current image of it. This is satellite imagery infrared as it continues to track its way off towards the north and west. The eyewall itself just about 20 miles wide and it's actually shrunk over the past several hours. That's not necessarily a good sign because as that spin gets tighter, the winds start to kick up even faster. We're currently seeing wind speeds sustained at 150 miles an hour, that, which will definitely do quite a bit of damage. That's where we sit at the Category 4 system as it tracks its way up and north and west. It's expected to make landfall later tonight. This is a snapshot of about Thursday at 1.30 a.m. As it continues to move itself up and along the Mississippi River Valley, eventually it tracks itself further off to the east before it runs out of steam, but not before it drops a significant amount of water. We're also talking about storms surge nearing 20 feet high.
Closer to home, a much different story. We managed to warm up into the mid 80s through the I-5 corridor. 60s out along the coast with plentiful sunshine. And speaking of that sunshine, there's a beautiful live look over the Oakway Center. Just still hugging the hills with a bit of that haze thanks to all the western wildfires we've been contending with. But radar and satellite showing it's dry as a bone. Not even a cloud to talk about. But we do see in the gray shaded area air quality warnings. The hot pink or purple depending on what color it's popping up on your screen. That's a fire weather warning. That expires later this evening. But over the next 6 to 10 days, above average temperatures are expected. We'll hover right around average through our weekend. But once we get into next Next week, that's when the 90s make a comeback. But dry conditions continue to plague much in the Pacific Northwest. Thanks to these persistent high pressure systems, the one that's over land, that's what's kind of keeping that smoke and haze over our area. Eventually pushes its way further to the south, but still dealing with sunshine for our Tuesday. And the warm temperatures definitely sticking around for the long haul. Here's the look at our rundown. Clear skies for the rest of tonight into tomorrow morning. The winds, they'll start to kick up out along the coast with gusts nearing 25 miles an hour. Those of us in the I-5 Quarter, nothing to deal with as far as the winds go or over the Cascades. We'll start to see some offshore clouds develop along the coast for our Friday morning and into Friday afternoon, but sunshine for all inland areas. As far as our daytime highs go through the southern Willamette Valley, low 80s, north winds at 5 to 10. Seven day forecast for the Eugene Springfield area keeps us right about average. That average is 82 degrees this time of year. Below 80s for Sunday with sunshine, it's going to feel maybe a bit like a taste of fall, but don't forget a week from today's the KVAL Pet Project Tailathon. We would love if you could help the Green Hill Humane Society in helping our four legged friends across Western Oregon. Out along the coast, 60s, 70s for us, north winds 15 to 20, gusts near 25. Seven day forecast. Ah, that's nothing to complain about. Mid 70s make a comeback Monday, Tuesday and into our Wednesday. That's about 10 degrees above our average. Umqua Valley highs into the low 80s for us after overnight lows fall into the low 50s. We're starting to see a bit of a weather pattern change as far as those overnight lows feeling just a little bit more crisp in those early morning hours. But that won't be the case once we move into the middle of next week. The 90s make a comeback. Summer definitely has its grip over the Umqua Valley still as we press through into the next month, which uh, is right around the corner.